Hey, what's up, guys? It's Drew on The Money Is Show. And uh, this week, we got a really cool guest uh, This came into town. And this is probably like his not first time, but like fourth time, it feels like, because uh, we keep not shooting the show because we're doing deals. And uh, which is why I think it's gonna be a great show for you guys because me and him connect really, really quick and, and have the same belief system. So uh, the guest on the show today, his name is Matt Andrews out of Tampa, Florida. And Matt Andrews has been a real estate investor for 20 years, almost just like me, has done every type of real estate deal, just like I did. Uh, did hundreds and hundreds of deals, just like I did. A lot of connections here. And, uh, and then launched that from uh, real estate into actually then creating businesses. And our belief system in how you start a business or run a business is very, very, very similar, uh, which is why it's hard for us to ever get in the show because we just jive with each other nonstop. So we literally <laughs> right. made ourselves uh, not eat lunch. And as soon as we're done, we can go eat uh, lunch to Don't make, make us, us angry. Don't make do us the show. <laughs> on that note right there, Matt, thanks for coming on, man. Awesome, man. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, man, we're like real estate brothers and entrepreneur Dude, brothers. I mean, it's like I came uh, to film the show last time. We just kept yeah. talking and making deals. We couldn't even film the show that time. Yeah, we literally got in the car and left. That's right. <laughs> and just started meeting meeting uh, other people and doing deals together. That's what happens when you get with the right people. And uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's like the first time I ever did that. Just like, oh, you flew all out here to shoot a show? How about we don't do that and we just go do deals? Well, your assistant <laughs> your assistant told me that when I was out. She's like, you know, usually we at least get the yeah. show filmed. You guys <laughs> just kept talking about deals. And oh, I, was, well. I was honored, so thank yeah. you. No, it was great, man. <laughs> Yeah, it worked out perfectly. And now you, you came back out again this time as well. And and this time it's like we were f- literally forced ourselves to, uh, not that we don't want to do the show, but it's just it's hard once you start uh, vision casting and going down all the synergies. But on that note, here's kind of where we, we hit off so, I think, uh, like twins on. Forget even all the real estate and that side of it. Yeah. It's like 20 years. All that stuff is, is identical. But where we hit off on really business in general, which is what I want this show to be about, uh, this episode with you which is, uh, we believe in a concept called um, connections, collaborations, and a cause. And I kind of live by those three words right there. And when you're in business and you're starting a business or you're trying to scroll, grow your business, uh, I think at the end of the day, like when people ask me, hey, uh, what's a piece of advice you could give someone? It's like, this is what I go to. Like, hey, off the top of my head, this is what you need to focus on. Show me your connections, show me your collaborations, and then show me your cause. So yeah. this is like, mirrors off each other. Uh, matter of fact, I want to tell a quick story here. When we first met, that first time we were going back and forth. Mm. And when we first meet, when I first meet anybody, I just kind of natural of how the environment is. I'm the one kind of asking the questions in my office. I'm like, hey, so what do you do here? Oh man, I should introduce you to this guy. Hey, what do you do? How does this work? Oh, I should introduce you to this guy. And I was going at it for like an <laughs> hour, hour and a half. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, stop, stop. How do I add value to you? <laughs> and we had this like value to value uh, uh, deal because yeah. normally you're doing the what I was doing, which yeah, we is had like, like a giver's face off, yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm going to give more no, to I'm you. I'm going to give you. No, yeah. I'm going to give to you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I will provide more value to you. I promise. And we just kept going back and forth at it. And again, it's, I think it's why there's just a lot of synergy here because it's not just something that we casually say. It's literally like who we naturally are. Like, yeah. it is just who we are as a person. Well, right? and it's proven in our businesses, yeah. in, our, in our life, right? That That is how we get things done. That's, yep. how, we, that's how we accomplish great things is yeah. by figuring out how we can help other people, how we serve, right? And so yep. you and I've learned, you know, and, and we knew this because we've read this, we've seen this, but we've learned in our business and life, that is what works. Yeah, it is. If we lead with how can we serve each other first, yeah. that is what makes that connection. And I know, and I know we're going into connections. Yeah, so, no, I, yeah. I love it. So let's go to these three words. I just want to get your advice in a little bit high, high, high level, but then also maybe let's get a little bit nitty gritty on these three words. So if they're in business right now and they're trying to start their business, grow their business, scale it, whatever it is, I think these three words are life key to all of it. The first word is connections. Yeah. Okay, so for you, what does that word connections mean? What, is that, what, is that, what does that mean when I say the word connections? Man, connections are, are the lifeblood of not just my business, but yeah. of my whole life. Yeah, right? you're right. So you're right. my contacts, my Rolodex, I mean, I call it my Rolodex in yeah, business, sure. but it's my people. It's yeah. my sphere of influence, yeah. right? So not just in business, but in, in my family life, in my spiritual life, in, in every phase of, of life, uh, the connections, the people you have around you, the sphere of influence. It's absolutely everything, yeah. you know. And you've heard the you've heard the phrase before, you know. Five years from now, you'll be the same person you are today, except for the people you meet and the books you read. The books right? you read. It's yeah. all about the information we're putting in. And the fastest way I know to learn anything, uh-huh. and the quickest way I know to grow as a person and to be challenged and to and to to meet the challenge that we should be, you know, to to accomplish what we want to, is by surrounding ourselves with the right people. So yeah. the connections is the first piece. Yeah. We've got to get into. 
uh, the right rooms with the right people. We've got to start to develop the relationships with those right people. But but that first connect piece is the biggest thing. And so yeah. I think about you know who do I want to uh, who do I want to grow into as a as a business person? Who do I want to be as a father? Who who do I want to be as a husband? I want to find those people that I can look at and say, hey, they have some qualities in that area of life mm -hmm. that I really want. Mm -hmm. Now the next thing is. How do I get around that person? Yeah. How do I make it a win for them to be around me? How can we have a, a good give and take relationship? But it's identifying those people uh, and identifying who you need in your life, maybe where you're lacking, and then how do you get into the right rooms yeah. with those people, right? right? Which goes into the discussion of networking and mastermind groups like you and I are both a part of and run, mm -hmm, right? So, mm -hmm. so much of it is getting into the right room. So from, from my earliest years in business, actually I should say, from you know my earliest years in business, I didn't connect. Yeah, I did not. Like I should I did have, not. right? I, I was an island. I tried to do everything myself. Yep. Entre Entrepreneur island, yep. right? So yep. we were talking about that earlier. So you know, I started out flipping houses. I was doing stuff I had no business doing. I'm the worst handyman of all time, <laughs> right? Like you should never. My wife won't even let me like yeah. flip a. Uh, won't even let me like hang a picture. Right, in right, house, right, right. And I'm trying to flip. I'm trying to like you know fix water heaters. Yeah, stuff sure, like that. of I'm, course. Like, I have no business doing that. Um, but you know, I went in and, and didn't collaborate, didn't connect, didn't have the connections. I thought I could just figure this out, you know, right. and that was the wrong approach. It took me took me four or five years before I really realized how hard I was making it on myself. And when I realized that everything that I needed to know, everything that I needed to learn, everything I needed to accomplish lied on the other side of a key relationship. Uh -huh. Once I realized that, I was like, oh my goodness, yeah. I could read books for the rest of my life and never learn the thing that I need to learn from and Andrew Cordell, yeah. you know, and, and and I could read about you know real estate investing for the rest of my life, and I'd still never never know what what I would know if I just worked with this guy for two or three days. Yeah, yeah. You know, just got in the right room, got in the right sphere of influence, right? So so once I figured that out, then it became less about processes and all about people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and now there's a great book called Who Not How, which I've read recently, which is a great book by Dan Sullivan. That's what I figured out back then was, man, I, I need to find the who, uh -huh. who knows how to do this so that I don't need to learn how, right? And that's what kept me in my genius zone and helped me discover that my genius was connecting and deal making. Mm -hmm. not, not a lot of the other minutia that goes into that, but the big picture connection and putting the deals together and then investing in the right people that can make up for all my weaknesses. So. Yeah. Connections are everything, man. I mean, it absolutely all starts there. Yeah, you, you said so much stuff there. I'm gonna try to go back because I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper with you, yeah. uh, so I can remember a bunch of these points. One was um, you were just talking about, which is so true that that connections are the uh, the backbone. It's the it's the spinal cord, the, the life lifeline yeah. of a business, and that is adamantly, adamantly true. There's a concept, uh, entrepreneur island which so many entrepreneurs start on, I did, you did, mm -hmm. where it's like, we're trying to do everything ourselves and yeah. nobody can do it better. And I'm gonna go build this business. And it's not that you can't build a business, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. It's not that you can't go flip houses and, and not just a house, but build it out and, and have a, I mean, when I was doing Entrepreneur Island, I had a, what people would have looked around me and said, gosh, you are successful as all get out. Same here. Right, wow, yeah. my God, look at what you, you've accomplished. And internally, it was like, I was also super frustrated though. Um, because I, I had these ideas of gr bigger things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that I wanted to go accomplish. And I was just like, I felt like I had this ceiling over my head and I just couldn't get there. It was ego for um, me a lot of it. Oh, like, of course, yeah. I was afraid to admit that, I didn't, that I didn't know, yeah. right? And yeah. so it wasn't just like that I thought I could do everything myself. It was that I was afraid to let other people know, even employees, yeah. you know, that I didn't know something because I thought I was supposed to know everything, yeah. right? And so that was a big piece of it for me was getting over the ego. Yeah, 100%. And the connections are that lifeline, right? And you just got to leave Entrepreneur Island because I'm telling you, it is a dead, it is an island, it is a dead end. Yeah. Like you're going to run out of resources, food, water, et cetera. Yeah. Like think about being on a stranded like Tom, island. You're like Tom Hanks talking to a volleyball. Mr. Wilson. <laughs> like you are going to run out of, of, of stuff. When you're uh, going to go crazy. <laughs> yeah, you will. And you're going to drive yourself crazy, especially if you have like big dreams of accomplishing big things that you want to go do. Right. It's just, it, that will not work. So that's one point that I thought that you made that was like dead on accurate is you got to understand your connections are your lifeline. It is it is what will get you to the next levels. It's how the game is played, right? Mm -hmm. So the second point that you made that I thought was genius was you talked about the book that came out, but it's it's always about who, not how. And this is something that I saw going through this the process throughout the years of, you know, I began teaching like you teach and speak and and people are always asking me like, hey, how do you do this? How was the steps for this? How do you wholesale this deal? How do you start this? How do you give me the 10, 10 uh, steps to go flip a house, right? And 
I, you can, I would give it to them, but it does not mean they would actually go do it. Uh, but they had this idea and belief, and again, I did too, is that if I knew how, then it would magically fix itself and I could go build this business. And, it, and although the how is important, I think the who is way more important. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the how you got to know the steps, right? Yeah, you got to know the steps to how to do the steps to how to close a property and how how title companies work or closing attorney. You know, you, you have to understand that stuff, and you've got to know that process. But yeah, thinking that that's it, knowing yeah. the ten steps or something like that, and that's gonna make you successful in real estate or anything else. That's not it, right? Because right. it goes back to relationships. So you can learn from a book a lot of the technical steps, yeah. right? But what you can't learn is relationship management, yep. how to deal with people. So when I started my real estate investment business, the big curve was not how do I analyze a cap rate, mm -hmm. right? I can learn that in the book and I've got a calculator. I can do that super quick. Right. Once you learn that, you learn it. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't even how to find properties. When I started, uh, you know, I could find properties pretty easily just on the MLS. We got lots of other ways now, but that was easy. For me, the learning curve was how do I deal with contractors who are yeah. 20 years old? I started when I was 20 something years old. Yeah. How do I deal with contractors who are 20 years older than me and mm -hmm. don't like me? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you know nothing other. about contracting. And I know nothing about contracting. I know yeah. nothing about people management. Right. I know how to I knew how to put deals together. I knew how to find deals, but how do I hire an acquisitions manager and yeah. train that person and, and breathe into them what I know how to do? How do I manage that relationship? How do I do it in a way that doesn't have them leaving me and become my competition uh, a couple mm -hmm. months later? You know, all these different things. And so the, the relationship management part of it ended up being the big piece of it. And that's what you can't learn from a book. That's what you learn. Uh, you either learn it through by yourself on Entrepreneur yep. Island through trial and error. Yep, yep. Oh man, I screwed up those five relationships. Yep. I'm going to do it differently now, which is a hard, long, painful, expensive way to learn that Very lesson. Very expensive. Or you learn it from somebody who's been there, done that, and can teach you those lessons. Which right? literally that's is the who, not how. The who. It goes back to that's it's the who. Because uh, right? that's how you're going to learn the, those steps and those processes there. And and so much of business and, and real estate and so forth is, is is not the how, it is it is the who. Even to the standpoint, of, at a certain point as you grow, and um, as I've climbed the, let's just say, the wealth ladder, okay, what I've realized uh, pretty quickly on was that I do not need to know how to do everything with uh, an investment, right? So I want to diversify and, and go own apartments or I want to go and, and do some VC work. I don't have to know everything about that thing, mm. but I do need to know who does know everything about that. And then I'm going to connect with that, that person and play the game with that person. Because that's where they're an expert at. That's their that's their genius, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to know every last detail about that other thing. I just need to know who. Mm -hmm. Who does know that? Yeah. And again, it goes back to the connection side of, of who you know. The la last little point here that, I, that you made that I just want to bring up is you brought the concept up. Five years is going to be the books and the people, right? Yeah. It's the information you're putting in your head. And I've always said that books are super, super powerful. And I'm constantly reading, uh, believe in it. But books, book growth... Uh, is like a in five years is like a slow drip. Mm. I always almost compare it to like the Chinese water torture. Yep. You know, that is like just one drip at a time. Yep. And a it, daily exercise. You will grow and you can change in five years from now, but it is going to be a snail pace. Mm -hmm. Because the thing about a book is, like you said, you can go read a book by yourself in a closed room with no one else in there, read a whole book and have this new uh, management idea, whatever it is that you're reading, by yourself. Right. But if you want to accelerate your growth and accelerate your uh, wealth, et cetera, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the relationship side. It's the people side. Totally. Go connect with them. Yeah. I was with uh, Nick today um, with the, the owner of, of Built Bar came in while you were here and, and we and him were, were talking about different stuff and he, we started talking about books that we mm. read. And he's like, man, I love history. And I love autobiographies. We're talking about autobiographies. And I said, I actually said to him, I said, dude, one of the greatest, we're in the green room. And I said, man, one of the greatest things that I love about The Money Is Show is, is basically I'm, I'm literally getting a, um, a book live. Like yeah. I'm taking someone like yourself, super successful, has, ha, and, and has their, their viewpoint, their angle, whatever it mm -hmm. is that their, their kind of genius is. And I literally like two to three times a week just break that down yeah. with someone who's actually doing it. Like right. the show has provided me way more value like than Cliff, it will Cliff. ever provide anybody else. Yeah, Cliff notes on steroids. Oh, yeah. oh, oh so you've made 300 million? It. Let's talk about Let's that. Let's talk about that. How did <laughs> you that know, work? it's like, I'm interviewing all these crazy people and it's literally like a, uh, I, I'm getting a one-on-one uh, -on -one information yeah. from a book, if you will, yeah. but nowhere near the book. When, even if that person wrote a book, there's nowhere I could learn what I'm learning 
Right. Versus just doing it. It's the way to generally. cut the learning curve down. 100%. Yeah. It's the and I, I don't want to call it the easy button, but it is the it, it is the accelerator button. It's the fast pass. Yeah, yeah. There you it's go. It's like the Disney the fast Disney pass. Disney fast right? pass. Florida. You skip the line, right? Yeah, yeah. And so and that's what it is, and that's what relationships have the ability to do to push us exponentially further faster. Yeah. Than than if we were just learning by ourselves or learning in a closet or a vacuum mm -hmm. by ourselves, right? And so we need to be reading. Yeah. We need to be putting that good information into our head. I think that's what shapes our overall perspective is that that constant drip, right? Yeah. That daily reading of, of whatever it is that we're reading. For me right now, it's a lot of John Maxwell. I love John Maxwell, oh, yeah, yeah. love leadership. And that's great little bite-sized chunks that I can read, you know, 10 pages of every day. Mm -hmm. Get one little lesson that just kind of like, just kind of sits in there and kind of churns a little bit. And then it's the relationships though that then help me, I think, implement those uh -huh. things, right? Uh -huh. And so I bring some of those broader leadership ideas to the relationships, but it's those relationships and the interaction with the people uh, and with uh, in the collaboration, which is our next word, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Where, it, where it really becomes magic and where the speed and the growth happens exponentially and the, lear the learning curve just, you know, Takes you, off. You, break, you break the learning curve, you yeah. know, you, you basically speed it up, which is great. Last thing on connection I want to talk about is a little bit of a how-to, which is let's talk about, you know, we're talking about how, the importance of connections, mm -hmm. which we, both of us just absolutely believe in. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about, okay, if they're, they're watching and they're in business, but how do you, how do you go make that connection? Yeah. Right. So how do you actually get connected with other people? Let's talk about some, some things that you've done. I'll throw some stuff out, but what are some things that you have done to make those connections? Get out of your box. If yeah. You will. Yeah. So, and we kind of mentioned this a little bit before, but I think number one, you have to identify what kind of connections you're looking for. Yeah, that's for, super important. What, what you're doing, right? So so for me, you know, if I, like I want to, and I work daily and want to work even and become even better of a father, yeah. right? And so I am constantly on the search for uh, people that I see with their kids that that really embrace fatherhood yeah. and, and that are working at it and that are trying to, not that are perfect because none of us are perfect, right? Yeah. But people that are daily, diligently trying to be a better dad to their kids, yeah. right? Trying to be a better husband to their wives, right? I want to be around those people. So I, so that's one thing that I've identified. So number I, that, one is like figure out um, who, what connections you actually are trying to become. Like yep. what is it you're trying to- What are to, those traits? What are those traits of, uh, in this example, okay, I'm, I'm trying to become a better father, a better business person, a better leader, whatever it is, in this example, a better father. Mm -hmm. So step one is if you wanna make more connections, identify who are you actually looking for? Like totally. who are you trying to connect with? Right. Versus it's not randomly walking out saying, okay, who can I go meet today? Exactly. It's not going to the grocery store and thinking there's gonna be a happen chance of someone at the checkout line uh, that you can go meet is going to change your right. life. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but that's not what we mean by connections. It's a proactive thing, not a reactive yeah, thing. Yeah, 100%. And it's yep. a planned out thing. Yep. Like we're diving in, okay, who do I want to meet? So step one is figuring out what what uh, type of connections are you looking for in a certain category? That'd be one thing. Yep. Uh, give, give me something else. That you so do. step two is where are those people hanging out? Where do you yep. find them? Where do you find right? them? And so, you know, if you're in a, a certain type of business, like for me in real estate, I can go, you know, like I run a group of, of uh, a mastermind yep. called Family Mastermind of High Level Real Estate Educators, right? Yep. So, so if you're a high level real estate educator looking to enhance your community, you go there because you're going to find other people like you, right? Yeah. So, so you have to, number one, figure out who it is and what are those traits. Number two, where do they hang out? How do you how do you get into that room, right? Mm -hmm. Well, number two, where where do they hang out? Then number three is how do you get into that room? How do you create those relationships? And the only way I know from a principal standpoint of how do you create relationships once you found them, you know where they hang out, um, and you're trying to get into that room or you're trying to develop those relationships, you got to do what we talked about. You give. You lead with serving them first. You make it a win in a relationship with them. Yeah. And that takes all different ways, shapes, and sizes, right? But the magic way to how you figure out what you can do for somebody, this is gonna be crazy. Ask. Ask. Just ask. <laughs> right? Yeah, ask. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it's like, oh whoa, a bomb just went off. Ask. Yeah. Whoever thought of that, right? It is that simple, right? It's it's having a real uh, give and take. It's connecting with people, finding out where they are identifying that those are the traits you want, that those are the kind of people you want around you. And then it is, it is approaching them in a way that uh, you, you open up a conversation so you know what they're working on, how you can add value to them, mm -hmm. and then go into that, go mm -hmm. into that value. That is what will take that from a connection uh, into that kind of that next phase of, of a deeper connection, which can grow into a, a meaningful relationship and one that can help bring you some of those things that you're seeking. You know? yeah. So I think that's it for me is, you know, find out, you know, identify who they are, mm -hmm. find out where they hang out, and then number three, find out how do you get into that room and make it a win for them to have a relationship with you. 
Yeah, for sure. Right. I mean, those are the points I figure. Who you want to? Who you want to? I'm gonna say aspire, be like what eating mm-hmm. the trade side. Where are they at? Because they're somewhere. I promise yep. you, they're somewhere. There is a who for that. They, they're somewhere. They figured it out. Uh, yeah. Figure out where they're at, and it's gonna take some time. You're gonna have to go beat beat the bushes and turn over rocks and start asking people. Hey, is anybody that, that you that meets somewhere? I'm looking for this. Uh, and then, uh, and the third part is like once you get in there, you gotta figure out how to how to how to make it a win. Mm-hmm. And I think this is. This is, I'm gonna go back to the book knowledge for a second. This is where book knowledge can help you because I've read a ton of books, speaking of Maxwell, uh, a Maxwell book of how to win friends. And, and there's, there's this point of where you can now apply the book knowledge that you've read right. of how to communicate with someone, how to uh, be, uh, you know, win, flu- win uh, uh, influence, win friends influence and influence, influence people, people yeah. um, where you can apply that knowledge now, book knowledge into real life. Because I think a lot of it is, uh, is a simple thing of uh, the old principle that, that every mom has probably taught their kid, which is you have two ears and one mouth and and listen more than twice as much as you talk. Yeah. Because all I literally do and is ask a question and then shut up. Ask good questions. Just, hey, just, yeah. sh- what, what do you do? That's a huge part of leadership, yeah. right? Is asking the right and questions. Just talk to me, tell yeah. me what it is. And as they're talking to me, my natural instinct is to figure out how can I add value Back to this person, yeah. whatever it may be, it may be an introduction. It may be a, a hey, I've done this. Here's what I found from it. It may, I don't, whatever it is. I'm, hey, uh, you, 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 I know this direct mail person, and you're doing marketing. Whatever it is, I'm just trying to figure out as I listen to them how I can. We, we, and and this is so important. And this is I think where so many people miss it at is when I sit down looking for a way to help. I have no angle. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. have no like backdoor thing I'm looking for. Right. I'm not sort of thinking, well, if I introduce this person to this person, I wonder if I could make this money on this transaction. Like, dude, it doesn't even go through my register in my head. Right. It's literally just how can I what how how, how do I add value to this person? Which almost I, confuses some people, right? Yeah. If they if they don't think that way, they're like, why is this guy trying to help me so much? And I've literally had people <laughs> stop and say, what are you doing? Right. I'm like. Oh, well, you just said that you were looking for this, and I'm just yeah. trying to, he's like, I know, but. What's your angle? <laughs> do you, am I supposed to pay you? I'm like, no, bro, I'm just, I'm just trying to help you out. This but I, I built these yeah. relationships that are crazy, crazy. So yeah. I, I think that that kind of fourth part is understanding that the, if I added a fourth part to it, 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 it's mastering the ability of once you're in the room, you identified it, you're in the room, you're, you're, you found the right people. It's master the ability of adding value. Yeah. And there is an art to that. People totally. f- f- uh, always, you, you hear on special social media, add value, add value. It's like, what the heck does that actually mean? Right. You know what I mean? And there is an art to that. So this is connections, super freaking important. It is the lifeblood of your 100%. growth. Of your growth. Yeah. And, and that's not just in business, right? Okay, no. then the next one is collaborations. Uh, let's talk about collaborations, the word collaborations. This is probably your genius. Uh, yeah. Out of the three, probably yeah. I would say maybe your genius is a collaboration part. What does that mean? Yeah, to me, collaboration, uh, for me personally, what that word means is, is working on worthwhile projects that, yeah. that benefit uh, you, your partners, and the people that you're working with uh, in a meaningful way, and being, being able to have the freedom to do that. That's true collaboration, right? Mm-hmm. So, so bringing people together, two or more, you know, uh, it could be two, could be, you know, like some of my mastermind groups with hundreds of people in them, mm-hmm. but bringing together a group for a common purpose. Uh, we were talking about John Maxwell before, yep. and uh, one of his phrases, and I'll, I'll, probably, I'll probably butcher, butcher it, it. You know, <laughs> word for word, but, but the right people in the right place at the right time with the right mission can accomplish anything, Mm -hmm. right? And that speaks to the collaborative power of people, right? So people, when they are of one mind, uh, I truly believe when they are working together, they can accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. When you have the right people, the right talent, and they're working in a concerted effort. So that's what collaboration is to me. It's getting people on the same page. Uh It's casting a vision that other people can get behind and say, yeah, let's work on that together. Mm-hmm. Let's work on that together, collaboratively, cooperatively, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Let's uh, let's do it in a way that it serves you, it serves me, and perhaps most importantly, it serves the the community or the crowd that we are trying to serve. So mm-hmm. to me, that's what collaboration is. And if we have connected in the right way, if we've done that first step, right, then what happens is it, it leads to collaboration, right? Mm-hmm. It leads to, because if we've connected uh, on a common cause, or we've we found some common ground, whether it's entrepreneurship or or family or fatherhood or, or all these things, we've connected on that. Now there's a there's a touch point there, yeah. right? There's something that we can say, hey, you know, we we both feel this way about it's this. common ground. We both have a heart for this. We both have a, a vision for this. Let's let's talk more about that. Let's connect further. And I think that connection morphs into collaboration when it becomes something that you can work on together. Yeah, I think this goes back to a lot of point one real quick, which is you on purposely proactively sought out 
those steps of connections. Yeah. It wasn't just a happen chance concept. It wasn't mm -hmm. like, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go to this, uh, I found this meetup that's like a business uh, meetup thing I'm gonna go to. Yeah, that's, I, I, I've never actually done that. I have on purposely looked for exactly what I was looking for. Yep. And then that's where I went. Sure. Not just like, oh, here's a networking party. Let me go here. Let me just try to fit a square peg yeah. in a round hole. And I'll just yeah. see what's going on over here. <laughs> yeah. like, no, 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 man. And there's, and there's plenty of them out there, too. You could, it, you could yeah. spend a, a lot of your time <laughs> wasting time at a lot it's of networking events. It's just a waste events. of time. It is. And, and, and for me, it's like I, I am very, very direct when I go do this stuff. And so going back to your point, which is in collaborations, when you do step one the right way, mm -hmm. the collaborations almost naturally happen. Yeah. Because there's so many connected points right. of your belief, my belief, um, your value system, my value system, yeah. because we saw each other out for this purpose, if you will. Sure. And the collaboration is just a, a, a great word that you use there, a phrase, it's just a deeper connection right. is what's really taking place there, right? Right. And With, it's deeper than networking. Like, I feel like networking in so many ways. I hate that like word. We've, uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of don't like that word either. Because it's Because like, it's nebulous, and yeah. it's almost like uh, it, there's the way it's come to be used a lot it, with a lot, so many different networking events, it's almost like, it's like a informal collaboration without purpose or something yeah, like, or yeah. it's, not, it's not collaboration. It's like, well, let's get it's, some drinks and casually talk. I'm like, yeah. are we dating? What yeah, we, yeah, exactly. What are we doing? What's the goal for this, exactly. right? What are we trying to accomplish, 100%, right? Yeah. And so networking with no purpose, it's almost vanity. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. almost kind of like, hey, I'm networking to say I'm networking. I'm going to go here and talk about how good I am about right. my business with someone else. It's like, take, a, take a selfie, put it on Instagram. I'm a networker. Yeah, we're, done in, we're done in 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> right, uh, exactly. Yeah, 100%. I, I just am, I'm, I know the word networking, I'm, I'm just not a huge fan of it because I think it's misleading right and in, in especially when you're trying to help others and you say we got a network it's like nah, I'm not really saying network that's not what I'm meaning yeah that word right but it's casually used right yeah inside the collaborations I think there's two two sides of the collaborations that sometimes people miss there's the collaborations where I'm gonna do something with you and me and you are gonna collaborate together and we're yeah. gonna go do something right there's that type of collaboration and then there's uh, I'm sorry there's, there's three types of collaborations the second type of collaboration is where I'm gonna introduce you to this person and you guys are gonna collaborate, mm -hmm. and that was my role. Right. My role was connector. to be the connector yep. of these two people. Which is a great and, role. And you guys are gonna collaborate. And yeah. I'm actually not a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, there's sometimes where, uh, if it's a, certain types of deals where I may take, I may upfront say, hey, look, if we end up doing this and this, uh, if, if, if you guys agree, I would like this piece of whatever it is, a small little piece. Sometimes, mm -hmm. and majority of the times, like 95% of the time, there's nothing. Yeah. It's just, this is my value add and, yeah. and I'm out of it, right? So there's collaborations with each other. There's a the collaborations where you connect the collaboration to happen. And then there's also the team collaboration of your own business where mm -hmm. um, you bring in your, your team and you're casting that vision of one purpose, one mind, yep. you know, the right time with the Maxwell. Rallying uh, the troops. And you're, you're collaborating with them uh, and using their expertise to drive that uh, ship, if you will. Right. To me, there's three types of collaborations that you could get into. Uh, all have super value, there, and I use all of them actually. Um, but just when you think about collaborations, think about it from that standpoint, um, is that it's not just like every time I go somewhere, I have to do the business. I have to be the one in right. charge. Like, dude, it's, matter of fact, I would say the majority of the time, this would be a good question, I'd like to know the answer with you. Yeah. I would say the majority of the time, it's I'm collaborating by connecting someone, and I'm kind of out of it. Uh, that's probably my most amount of collaboration. Yeah. Second is probably my team. Yeah. And then third is actually like me and you're going to collaborate on a, on a deal. Yeah. And that's just probably because I always do value first. And well, which and one is your in, in orders there? Would you well, say? I think that's the one of the highest and best use of like your skill and maybe my skill because we're natural connectors, yeah. right? Includers so, and stuff. So I think I think us having the uh, the awareness of that yeah. and and not feeling like just because we connected two people and made a great connection that we now have to be involved in the collaboration mm. that results from it right because yeah, yeah. i used to think that i used to think okay i'm connecting you connecting you now i'm i'm i need to be a part of this collaboration yeah, yeah. i'm in the or, deal or even having the ego to think i'm supposed to be a part of this collaboration yeah. or something like that right well now i realize man one of my superpowers mm -hmm. is seeing what i call low hanging fruit in collaborative opportunities between people, you know, in my spheres of influence, yeah. right? So I look at you and I look at, you know, let's say John over here and I think, oh my goodness, I got to get Andrew and John together because Andrew just built this and John's about to spend $2 million building that. He could white label that from Andrew. This is an unbelievable, this is perfect, yeah, right? Yeah. Now you didn't see it. John didn't see it, right. but I see that. I see that clearer than I see it in my own business mm -hmm. many times, right? Yeah, it's and it's I, a very true point right there. And I get excited. I get yeah, excited, yeah. like I'm talking about it. I'm getting oh, yeah. excited right now. Like I'm, I'm hooking you up with a fictitious person. I just made up named John <laughs> and I'm excited about that, I want right? to be John. <laughs> like, John's incredible. He can be anything you want him to be. I just made him up, so. No, but I mean, that, that to me 
is the highest and best use of my power, uh, my ability to build a community, is being able to make a meaningful connection that really means something, where there's going to be a collaboration, and you can plant a seed that maybe takes a few minutes or a few hours or whatever it is, but then you plant that seed and it grows without your direct mm -hmm. involvement, yep. without yep. your physical presence, yep. without your time. Uh -huh. To me, that's not infinitely scalable because you still have to plant the seed and you've got to be actively involved in doing that, but that's pretty scalable to be yeah. able to plant a seed, make a meaningful connection between two people that will then grow and flourish yeah. and bring fulfillment to those parties without your direct involvement after that. Um, that I think is the highest and best use of our skill, you yeah. know? So for me, you know, I, and I, and I've heard lots of different terms, you know, super connector and, you know, uh, you know, super collaborator and all different terms of people that connect people. For me, it's, you know, it, that there doesn't need to be a title on it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is, I have identified it as one of my powers, right? Yeah. I can see this person and this person bringing value together to their communities by bringing you know, their, their talents together. I see that. And so I've made an entire uh, life out of that, mm -hmm. you know, and bring, and I've, that's pretty much what I spend most of my active time doing is bringing together people that may not see those low hanging fruit opportunities, finding those yeah. and then juicing them, you yeah. know, by making those introductions and helping however I can. Sometimes that means I am involved going forward, many times not. And I actually like it better when I'm not, because yeah. then it's like, I did a great thing. I planted a seed and I can come back in and see it, or I can advise on it or whatever it is. But to me, I think that's the best thing you and I can be doing, you know, mm -hmm. because if we are making introductions and the growth of those collaborations are limited by, by our requirement to be involved, involved. in that time-wise or physical, then that's not a great, that's not a great use of our skill, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But if we can make that connection, make it well, and then it grows without us, dude. Yeah, no, that's where, that's where you and me live, dude. One hundred percent. Like I, I, I have a couple of people that I work with uh, extensively, and and um, I have provided so many connections uh, for these certain people, right? And yeah. and it's like I, I literally, literally will bring someone to their office, sit down with them, yeah, and say, "Hey, you like to hook people up, yeah, yeah. You like to, <laughs> no, like, you're like me, bro. You hey, like to you're doing up. this, and I, this guy does this, and I know you're doing this, and I mean, you guys need to talk." Yeah. And and I have done this so much with certain groups of certain people, right? Mm -hmm. That they literally will call me like, "Hey, dude, I, I got I got I got to pay you. Like, how yeah. do I pay you for this?" It was like our give off the yeah. other day. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, "Oh, I'm doing I'm doing it for pay." And they're like, "No, dude, this is like number 19. Like, yeah. how do I pay you?" And uh, the truth is, is like, I, I don't even, I, I, well, that I would ruin it for you if they paid you. Yeah. Right. It, it would take my joy away. I'm like, wait, 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 you can't pay me for this. Cause then it's like, I have this like responsibility. Obligation yeah. Yeah. It's you. an obligation instead yeah. of like this give. Right. Yeah. yeah 100%. So I'm totally with it. It's like, no, 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 don't pay me. That'll ruin it. <laughs> so I think it's the last point here. I think you have connections, collaborations. And the last point that you kind of talked about is cause. Yeah. And this is a super, super, super important one. I know you have yours, I have mine. I want to kind of go through, what, when I say the word cause, what does that mean to you? You know, I think it means a higher purpose. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it could mean, you know, I'm involved in a, a lot of charitable efforts. Um, you know, I'm on the board of multiple charity, three different international charities. We, we build children's homes in, in Haiti. Uh, we build, uh, we, we put together wheelchairs in Jamaica. Uh, we funded and built children's homes in India and Nepal. I love that and that's a great cause. Uh, but your business can have a cause-based aspect to it yeah. as well. It could be some. It could be something tied to a charity, or it could be the cause is the people you're helping, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, in my world of of real estate investing and real estate investing educators, you know, the Family Mastermind. That's a group of people who are together for a common cause of being better for their students, being better for their communities, their tribes that they've built, right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think that is a cause in and of itself to build a community and to empower that community. But I think having a higher purpose is mm -hmm. really what, I'm, what, I, what I think of when I think of cause. So uh, a cause is not make a whole bunch of money. That's right. not a cause, right? Yeah, a, sure. ca a cause is not have 500 employees. Mm -hmm. A cause is not have this many properties, mm -hmm. right? Those are, those are all not bad things. And you, you want to have revenue. You want to have great people. You want to, you know, in real estate investing, you want to own property, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but is that a cause? Is that a higher purpose? I don't think it is. I think having the higher purpose, having a cause behind that, having a, a mission driven purpose is what makes all the rest of that stuff work. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's what drives our process of connection mm -hmm. and our process of collaboration is being able to uh, tap into that higher purpose. So mm -hmm. for me, uh, you know, I am at my best when I'm helping other people 
be their best. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to figure that out, right? When I was still in my uh, my how not who phase yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff, right? Um, but that's what I learned. Matt Andrews is at his best when he is helping other people be their best, right? Yeah. That's a cause for me. Now, now, you know, going after that cause, uh, seeing that as a vision, uh, putting together the the teams in place to to make that a reality. That that yields a lot of great things, great mm -hmm. relationships. Uh, great financial rewards, um, great ability to to have freedom and 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 work on other projects, right? But it's the cause, and it's it's helping those people. It's growing and and creating those connections and and doing something good that drives all the rest of that stuff. So so to me, that's what cause is. You know, mm -hmm. connection, collaboration, cause. I think that third one is what informs how we go about those first two. So in a lot of ways, we've got to figure out what that is. In a lot of ways, that drives us before we even go to the connection and collaboration process. So we know that, that it's being uh, you know, uh, driven by and guided by whatever that big cause or that bigger mission or purpose is. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think of when I think yeah, of Yeah, for cause. sure. I mean, cause is something that, um, it was, it, and, and I'll just talk from a personal side. It was unique because I've always, uh, let's say, given back just from my upbringing, mm -hmm. being a Christian. It's kind yeah. of being in, in inbred too. inside of us that yeah. there's, you know, if you if you get into the scripture side, of it, there's the tithe and there's the offerings and give to receive. And it's just the, that that works thing. even if you don't believe in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, right. The principle <laughs> is still the principle. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, growing up through business, I was still doing that that kind of same concept of let's just say use the concept of give back, mm. and. Um, it wasn't until later when I started using the uh, a cause that mm -hmm. I said, okay, I know I'm giving back and I'm doing this, but but I felt like I was missing something. And when I added the cause, and for me, and this may be different for everybody, this is not what it has to be, but for me, I did not want to be um, in charge of the cause, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be totally uh, there, do their own thing, whatever that thing is, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to participate in helping it. Yeah. The best you I champion can help the it. cause. Yeah. Whatever yeah. that is, right? Yeah. Other people, I have one of my our great friends, Eddie, yeah. um, who uh, is more of a one who uh, uh, runs the cause and creates the cause and, and pushes the cause and actually give to his cause. Um, but my position was always like, hey, I, I, I didn't want to be the cause. Mm -hmm. I actually wanted the cause to, in just my world, I wanted the cause to have nothing to do with me, basically. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to have the cause, right? And there's not a right or wrong there, it's just whatever one works better for you. But I have never seen in my life the power of what a cause can do to a group of people when you have a powerful cause. Yep. It is astonishing. Okay, if you if you 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 could talk about what that group of people can do for the cause, yes. We could talk about what that group of people that could do um, uh, to help the cause, to promote the cause. Okay, all that is like crazy. That's the breed is you have a cause. Yeah. The side effect of that is the room. Yeah. Because when, and I know you used this recently, I think for your Haiti um, stuff. Yeah. Where you're yeah. in that mastermind, the family. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're saying, hey guys, we're all here to do this and build our business and relationships, connect collaborations. But while we're here, let's do something bigger. Yeah. That, that is bigger than all of us. Sure. And let's all now collaborate together on this cause. What they, and a lot of times that may be nothing more than just donating money to it, but sure. understanding it and then bringing the conversation up to have, have them go talk about it later. Yeah. And it's amazing that once you do that, that, that room that participates with you, collaborates with you, is like somehow even deeper connected all creates of a sudden. Creates a bond. Yeah. I mean like deep bond. Not no, it like, creates a bond. Not just the yeah. connection of collaboration stuff. It's like a next level of connections yeah. when there's a cause involved in it. Absolutely, because that group has helped each other with a higher purpose, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. so, so they have helped each other with a cause, with a mission. Yeah. And so, so yeah, you're right. We just did that at one of our meetings. You know, the, the family mastermind group that I run, um, you know, we brought in uh, a good friend of mine, Frank McKinney, who's a multi-million dollar house flipper and, yeah. and just an amazing character and a guy who, yep. has, who has done such great work in Haiti. And I wanted to have him come in to speak to our people. And I was like, I'd love to help champion this cause too, right? Yeah. Didn't, didn't start that, that, uh, that effort in Haiti, right? But uh, wanted to start kind of a, uh, an effort uh, alongside of it that my group could be a part of to create that cause and create that bond. So, so he came in and, uh, and our good friend uh, that you know, Kevin Harrington from yep. Shark Tank yep. came in because he wanted to help champion the cause too, which was super cool. Forbes Riley, who you know as well, came in and she helped champion the cause. And, and then, you know, 80, 80 plus multi-million dollar businesses that are part of that group uh, got behind it and Frank kind of painted the, 
the vision. And I, and I got up as the leader of that group and said, hey, you know, we're working together on so many different things. We're making millions. Let's, let's just say it like hey, it is. Dude. We're making millions of dollars together. We're helping our communities here. We're teaching our people. Um, let's, let's use our collective power here to go help somebody else that is as far removed from our world as you could possibly imagine. You yeah. know, in a, in a third world country that that is probably, I think, the poorest, most destitute on earth. What an amazing thing for us to be able to do as a group to make a difference, right? So in an hour, we, you know, we raised, it wasn't millions, it was $150,000. We raised it in an hour, unplanned, basically, yeah. like right after Frank talked, 150 grand. We're able to build houses in Haiti for $5,000. We funded 30 houses right yeah. there on the spot in an hour. 30 houses that will house a family of eight. Mm -hmm. So 30 times eight, however many people, I can't do quick mm -hmm. math, but however many people that is, 20, that's how many, yeah, 240 people were affected in one hour right there because of connection, collaboration, and introduction and, and giving them a conduit to be a part of a cause. Yeah. And what happened as a result is exactly what you said. That group is Just, tighter, yeah. right? And now as we go into Haiti to build those houses and we give them progress reports, what's gonna happen? Yep. They're gonna get even tighter. Yeah, They're gonna sure. talk more and more about that. What happens when we finish that first house? When that first house of the 30 you know, that we funded are finished, we'll show pictures to everybody to help fund that. That'll bring us even closer together, right? right. We'll start getting excited about how we might be able to, to do more next year, mm -hmm. you know? And so uniting together for a common cause that doesn't do anything uh, directly benefiting you helps bring that group together. It helps give that group and identify a higher purpose to work on with each other. Mm -hmm. And and it solidifies uh, what you'll do together in, in life and business, right? By having that cause. With that piece taken out, uh, it's almost just about business and money. Mm -hmm. And that to me- Which will get emptiness quick. Empty quick. And, and you know what else? It gets boring quick too. Mm -hmm. And and maybe if, you know, for those struggling financially, maybe they don't understand that, but but that's a real thing, right? Once you've built businesses and you've got up to a certain level of success, it is not about the money. Yeah. It's about the impact. Yeah. Okay. Once you've reached a certain level of success, you know, it doesn't matter if you add another zero or whatever. It doesn't matter if you add more to the perception of what you're doing. It's about going from success to significance. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what so many uh, successful business owners are looking to do is get to that next level and they're not sure what it is necessarily, but they know, wait a second, I thought when I had this much money, I was gonna feel fulfilled or whatever. That wasn't it, it wasn't yeah. the money. It was a, it was impact, mm -hmm. it was a cause, it mm -hmm. was a mission, right? And that's us all uh, looking for significance. And so I think part of having a cause and the byproduct of having a cause is that you offer uh, your people, your opportunity, uh, your, your communities, your employees, whoever it is, the opportunity to be a part of something significant to not just be successful but to reach that higher level of impact right mm -hmm. and lasting impact so for me that's what it is and that's what yeah. cause is and and if i could i'd love to tell you just a quick story about uh, i was telling you about my great grandfather last time yeah. i was here yeah, right yeah. so really quick because i think he and uh, and hopefully we can flash up a picture of him so you yeah. guys can see yeah. this real quick because it's uh, i haven't had this amazing picture of him i've got it on my wall in my office yeah. and it's unbelievable and i and what we're talking about today I've just continued to think about him yeah. in my mind as yeah. we've talked about this because, you know, connection, collaboration, and cause, um, you know, I, I come from a great lineage of connectors, right? Yeah. You know, my family are, are business owners and, and entrepreneurs and, and, you know, farmers and preachers, mm -hmm. right? So these guys were guys that were connecting all the time. Farmers were, you know, my family, you know, they had uh, history and farm. They, they had to connect to each other because they needed to live. Right, they yeah. needed to share and live, right? And so, so back then, we're talking early, you know, 1900s, 1920s. My great grandfather realized that people living on the outskirts of the cities were having a really hard time getting fresh produce, yeah. right? And so, he wanted to do something about that. He had, so he was connected to these people. He was already a community leader in a lot of uh -huh. ways. So, so the connection was there, and he saw that need, right? And so, he thought, well, I'm going to create a mobile produce, right? So my great grandfather was like the first food truck, yeah, right? Yeah. And and if you see this picture, you'll see, man, this guy retrofitted an entire truck with, with baskets for fruit and produce. And, uh, and, and it, it was amazing. He created the first mobile produce truck and he drove that produce truck out to the fruit stands that were mm -hmm. on the outskirts right? Uh -huh. um, and and took, the, took it to the people that couldn't come into town to get it. So he became a wholesale supplier mm -hmm. to the people that owned the fruit stands out of town, right? right? right. Well, a, as he started doing that, more and more people started coming to him and saying, we have need for this further out of the city and stuff like that. So he thought, okay, well, I'm going to start collaborating 
more with these other small business owners, right? In fact, I'm going to buy, uh, the next time I can, I'm going to buy a truck and I'm going to basically rent it to this guy so that he can run his own mobile produce, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so now we got two two trucks out there doing yeah. mobile produce and now we've increased the band. Now three, now four, now five. He started to empower and collaborate other entrepreneurs that started their own business on the back of his. Right, and right. they created a network of wholesalers that, that fed a lot of Tampa, Florida yeah. in the 1920s, right? Yeah. And so he connected with those people, saw the need, collaborated with the other business owners in a way that served the community, right? right. And he did that because uh, the cause that he was really focused on was making the community better. Mm -hmm. Getting, I mean, you know, we think about things like, you know, you know, feeding people in Haiti and stuff like that. Like he wanted to get food to the people that were on next the outskirts of Tampa over. at yeah. the time, next town over and stuff. And so he did that. And then he eventually parlayed that into a, uh, you know, a, a storefront called Copeland's Market, which still stands in yeah. Tampa, Florida today. Uh, it's not owned by our family anymore, but it still stands one of the largest wholesale produce markets. It's on Hillsborough Avenue in Tampa, Crazy. Florida. But that was what my grandfather, Lloyd Copeland, was all about. He was about connecting, he was about collaborating, and he was about doing it for the cause of making the community better. So real quickly, just to, to kind of sum up you know, why he was so great, he invested in people, yeah. not things, yeah. right? And I've taken that on as my, my mantra, yeah. right? Invest in people, not things. Um, we called him Pop, Pop Copeland uh -huh. is what we uh -huh. called him. And Pop, you know, I, I had the opportunity as a, as a young man to, to work with him a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we used to dig worms. He was a big fisherman. We would dig worms yeah. in his backyard, hands in the dirt, right? Yeah, yeah. He was 85 years old when I was a little kid. and was always cut up and bleeding from briars and working in there, working in the earth, you know, dirty fingernails and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's what I remember about him. And uh, so he worked hard and he invested in people. And there was a time where uh, in Tampa, and you can look this up, Lloyd Copeland, um, the mayor in Tampa died in right. office, uh, sudden death, right? And the community of Tampa needed to elect an interim mayor before they could have elections, right? right? And the city council said, we need somebody who doesn't wanna be a politician, who we can trust, who has a great name in the community and who has credibility with the people. Mm -hmm. And they went to Lloyd Copeland, mm -hmm. my great grandfather, who was not a rich man, yeah. not a politician, uh, but a respected man and a trusted man in the community. And my great grandfather became the mayor of Tampa yeah. until they had cool. elections, yeah, right? Yeah. A man who would never would have run for office or been that guy, right? But the reason why he had that integrity and was known as that, the reason why he had that trust and that standing, and the reason why people said, hey, you want somebody you can trust? It's Lloyd Copeland, was because those three things that we talked about, yeah. right? He connected. He collaborated and he and he did it with a purpose-driven cause behind it to make his community better. And when Pop died, uh, you know, a few years back, uh, people came out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. People that my family didn't even know. Yeah, your great grandfather gave my grandfather his first job, <laughs> and we started and and our company or our our family started this company because of that. Yeah. You know, we uh, my great grandmother's. Uh, family couldn't eat during this this period of time, and your great grandfather gave groceries for three months for free to this family. Things like that, yeah. right? And so, Pop didn't leave this legacy of money. He didn't leave a legacy of finances. He didn't leave a bunch of money in the bank that all floated to to the grandkids and great grandkids and stuff. He left a legacy of investing in people. Right. instead of things. And when he passed away, we already knew that about him, right? Yeah. We already knew that about Pop, and we knew that he'd invested in people, but we didn't know how many. And most importantly, we didn't know the butterfly effect. Mm -hmm. The ripple right? effect, yeah. So Pop affected people that we heard about, hey, we, your great-grandfather did this for us and did these amazing things. But the truly amazing stories were the second, third, and fourth generation ripples mm -hmm. from that. And there are people today in Tampa that owe what, a lot of what they have to collaborations that happened that my great-grandfather was in the middle of somehow yeah. in Tampa, yeah. right? So Pop Copeland died the richest man that I've ever met, yeah. right? And I want to, when I pass away, I want to be as rich in relationships as he, as he was. So the three things we're talking about today, yeah. I mean, that, that's the formula, yeah. right? In some sure. way, shape, or form, that is the formula for success in business, 
mm-hmm. for success in life, for mm-hmm. success in family, uh, for success in relationships. Connect, collaborate, cause. Mm-hmm. So I love it, man. This yeah. is this is right down my alley, and that's that's what my great grandfather really embodied, and that's what I try to, in some way, uh, bring to my communities that same kind of spirit of collaboration and doing it with leading with other people first. And so I feel like one of the richest men in the world because I'm rich in relationships. Yeah. Yeah, I know for sure, man. And that goes into that success versus significance, uh, or you can have success and significance, right? Yeah. You, can have, you can have both. Yeah. Uh, Use one as a springboard mm-hmm. into yep. the other, right? Yeah, yep, so, for sure, yeah. man. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, obviously, I uh, did no uh, Pop Copeland. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, it's, you would have, he would have been your kind of dude, man. Personification of, of the example of what you're looking for and, 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 and to pass away and just have that rippled effect of, of people continually coming and talking to you mm-hmm. about uh, the, the, the impact that they had. Like, it's like, it, it, it's, it's what, there's no way at the end of his life that he, he would have ever looked back and said, man, that wasn't worth it. Yeah. Like, dude, he, it's like a completely fulfilled uh, life. Yeah, uh, that someone lives when you have that many connections and relationships and collaborations and help that you've provided for people. Uh, there's nothing more significant than that right there. Absolutely. Um, and and it's, it's the example of it. So we'll make sure we get a picture up. Uh, if you give me that picture over and we'll for get sure. to put it up for us. Yeah. Uh, on the point leading with cause and uh, Pop Copeland here, let's hit the money is sign and go through uh, what this answer means to you. Yeah. Uh, money is blank. You put your answer right here. Okay. And then you sign it right here. And then me and you will uh, talk about it. All right. Let's do this. Let me give you the Sharpie here. All right. Here we go with my, my amazing handwriting. <laughs> There we go. There it is right there. <laughs> All right, here we have Matt Andrews and uh, the camera in the back. His answer is money is fuel. Money is uh, fuel. I believe this is the first time anybody's ever used this word. That's what I was going for. Yeah, I know that's kind of difficult. Yeah. Uh, money is fuel. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, let's break it down real quick. What, it, yeah. what does that mean to you, money is fuel? Yeah, so you know, I, there were so many different ways we could say this, right? And mm-hmm. uh, so many of your previous guests have used great words, freedom, yeah. right? And uh, you know, uh, a tool, uh-huh. I think, it was another one that I thought of that that was used. So fuel, uh, I use that as, as almost a, a same kind of uh, same kind of thought process. Money provides the fuel for the things we want to accomplish, right? Yeah. So if we're talking today about you know connection, collaboration, and cause, well, money is is a byproduct of doing that the right way, but it's also the fuel that we can create more of that, mm-hmm. right? So so money is a tool. Money is something to be used. Uh, you know, and we can use it in lots of different ways. But if we can use money in a way that creates meaningful connections, that creates the context and the atmosphere to connect with people and to collaborate and bring people together in a way that will make the community and make their communities better and do that with a common cause behind us, then that's what we need to be using money for, yeah. right? So so I love, you know, the idea of money as fuel for our cause, mm-hmm. as money for fuel for creating more meaningful collaborations and, and creating the, uh, the context yeah. for collaboration. And so that's why I think about like mastermind groups, right? Yeah. Like my family mastermind and other mastermind groups that I run and I'm a part of, uh, to me, that takes money to put on a mastermind, right? But that's putting, that money is the fuel for that collaboration. Yeah. So, so that's what I think of when I think of the word fuel. Yeah. Um, it, it is kind of, the, it provides the octane, sure. you know, to, to juice and exponentially grow what you're doing, and it's a tool that uh, that quite frankly, you know, in a lot of ways, can't be replaced, mm-hmm. you know, with anything else. You've got to have some kind of currency to be able to accomplish some of the things that we want to accomplish. So, so to me, money is fuel. Yeah, I, I think about it when you gave the answer, money is fuel. I thought about I, I go back to the cause again because I think everything in business should be driven to a cause to some right. degree. And and I, when you talk about money as fuel, it's like taking that Haiti project, right, where you're talking about uh, building the houses and so forth, and um, the the cause or the 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 project is there uh the people are there that will actually do the project yep. in the sense of there's already people that have said hey i have volunteered i have moved down yep. here whatever it is and i will i will go build these houses oh, they're waiting I will, for it yeah. i will uh, 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 do this stuff but there's something that i need to go do this <laughs> uh I, I actually i'm gonna need some money to go do this right here. Yeah. And you, get, you kind of think about it from the standpoint of uh, that fire is already there. You don't mm-hmm. have to actually start the fire. 
Uh, no. uh, the fire of in this example of, of the, the homes in Haiti, like that 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 fire, that project already exists. Yeah. Um, what money does is is like pour, pouring fuel all over the fire yep. that then takes it from a thought and idea to, hey, we just did 30 homes for you. Yep. Money was the fuel that built those 30 homes. Right. Guarantee. I mean, the, yeah. it, it's the fuel that built it. 100%. I and mean, I'm not taking away from or even saying that it's worth more. The the people are there and, and uh, that's part of the part of uh, getting the 30 houses done. But again, uh, I'm going to go back to scripture just for a second because we grew up in we, in spiritual homes and and uh, there's that verse that I always, always go back to that says, um, uh, and it's, it's in Ecclesiastes and it talks about money answereth all things. Mm. It's like, you stop and think about it, just yeah. meditate on that, that freaking phrase right there, money answereth all things. And inside of it, we can apply right here to this uh, house in Hades. Hey, do you want to build enough houses in Hades to uh, put it right in houses? No problem. You're going to need one thing. Your money. Yeah. You, you've got to have it. Yeah. you got to have money. And you can say, well, I, well, you have to have volunteers. Um, actually, you don't. Because if I have enough money, I can just hire the people. Yeah. I can buy the land. I can yeah. hire the people. I can buy the products. And I can You can pay homes. people and call them volunteers, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. again, if we start, like, stopping and thinking about it, that, that concept of actually money answereth all things. It's, it's pretty fun when sometimes I, uh, when I'm daydreaming, I'll run down those rabbit trails. Yeah. I'm like, okay, let me, th- let me at least see if I can prove this out for a second. Right. And it's amazing how it works. And money is that fuel. Yeah, that, it's and it's it's the accelerant, right? Yeah. You know, it can be the accelerant many like a, times. I think too. of a barbecue grill and, and squirting that chart that lighter fluid and it just blows yeah. it up, man. And and that's what money can do inside of it, Matt. With your with your masterminds that you're that you own, the family and and uh, uh, your real estate career that you have and so forth. If they want to follow you somewhere, where's the best place for them to yeah. connect with you? Yeah, best place to reach me is uh, just go to my site mattandrews.me. Okay. And all my information is there. And then would love to connect on social as well. So find me on IG. It's at heymattandrews.com. So at heymattandrews is my IG. And you can find me on Facebook too. So I, I love hearing from people. So connect with me on IG. Shoot yep. me a message. I read all my messages. Comment on any photos, you know, and we can start a conversation that way. But connect with me yep. and uh, let me know. Specifically, I love hearing about what is your cause? Yeah, yeah. You know, what is your mission? What is the bigger purpose that drives what you're doing? I love hearing about that from people because I love to be a champion for other people's cause and and to rally the troops, obviously. Collaboration, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, so sure. so I'd love, you know, mattandrews.me, reach me there, but hit me on my socials too. Let me know what you're working on because that excites me. Yeah. And the more I know about what great empowered entrepreneurs and business people and and just uh, you know, our friends are doing out there the more I feel empowered to to help. And sometimes yeah. that's with the the fuel of money. Sometimes that's with uh, my influence or my Rolodex. Sometimes it's with my involvement. Sometimes, like you said, it's just making that connection, planting the seed, and out. then watching that seed grow. Yeah. And then yeah, I'm yeah. out, right? But but let me know what you're working on because yeah. I, I want to know about that. So. Yeah, I follow you on uh, Instagram all the time. I, I think it's literally this morning, I actually just how freaking Instagram knows everything that we do. And yeah. somehow they knew that you were going to be here today and literally all your Instagram feed all of a sudden pops up. And I'm like, it's like here, check up on so Matt Andrews. Creepy, coming today. Dude, how yeah. this worked. But listen, this morning I was, I was literally finding, Hey, Matt Andrews on Instagram. And it was about your, uh, the Haiti stuff yeah. that you just did. And he has some photos there. So it was super cool. So again, you guys watch him, man. Make sure you guys uh, hit up his website, uh, mattandrews.me. And then of course, follow him on Instagram as well. at Hey, Matt Andrews. We'll put in the bio link uh, below. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Remember connections, collaborations, and calls. This is Matt Andrews. We'll see you next week on the Money Is Show. Thanks guys.